The QPR podcast is in association with 101greatgoals.com. For post-match Premier League press conferences, FIFA 15 videos, freestyle clips and much more, subscribe to the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash 101greatgoalsyt. QPR! Hello and welcome to the QPR podcast, the podcast that has a long-term plan, at least for the rest of the week. I'm David Fraser, I'm joined by three other QPR fans. Uh, we have here this evening from Independent R's, Paul Finney. All right. And we have, hi Paul, we have also from BT Sport, Chris Charles. Hello. And third consecutive week? Yeah. Third consecutive week, very good. You're, 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 can we now move you from semi-regular to regular and uh, lose the entire 606 message board as your listeners in the process yes you can. why do they not like you <laughs> no not really why I don't you're such know. a lovely guy perfectly nice aren't and I? You're that's my job <laughs> and you've got the stubble thing going on now and that's more to do with the long hours as I'm working at and work terribly diligent because you work yeah. in Shoreditch you haven't said who it is yet yeah. so basically, it's a oh it's Clive <laughs> Whittingham <laughs> really? it's Clive from Loughborough of course it is so basically Clive you, you, you've been upgraded from Sean Wright Phillips did us to Almost full first team. Oh, goodness. That's Scary thoughts. Yeah, yeah. that's horrible. It, it don't just blow come. it, mate. Don't blow it. Yeah. How's Sean Wright Phillips' week been this week? Any, is he any, oh, any God, tweets? <laughs> I, he got, I got stuck. Uh, I stopped listening to him on Thursday when he got stopped on Wandsworth Bridge in traffic and said he was devastated by it. I was like, <laughs> that's, Brilliant. This, this guy's actually trolling us now. Yeah. This isn't the other way around, is it? <laughs> he was devastated because there's traffic. Oh, yeah, it was tra- it's hard. Oh, life. devastated. Hard man. life for devastated. Sean. What are we talking about? <laughs> Last week's yes. podcast. Somebody who didn't listen to his own podcast I did, last week. I did, but I didn't listen to all of it. Sure. Because <laughs> it was too long. I did Ooh. actually listen to it. I did listen to it, but my commute cut out and I didn't go back yeah, for the it's last Clive, bit of it. Clive's R's you're obs- end. You're, you're obsessed by late. Yeah, I didn't get the last R's end. Uh, I listened to about the first 35 minutes. You should. It. it was most excellent. Yeah. It was very, it was. very good. It was very good. The host was shade. So go on, explain. Good. For anyone that didn't That's listen to it. last week. But, uh, well... Sean uh, Sean put on his uh, Twitter last week, uh, just randomly after the Crystal Palace debacle, um, just asking everybody how their week was and what they did with their week, and said that he would provide a short snapshot every day of what he does with his week, uh, which was met with just a tidal wave of apps. Just Do you know not what? much of it was repeatable. I'm thinking he's probably got to Bridge, and he's tweeted, and he's probably thought with well, the response coming in from QPR fans about Bridges and him, and he's probably thought, you know what, I'm, I'm going to forget this, I'm coming off Twitter now. The, no, no, no. The more I read what he was doing last week, the more I think he is actually winding us up now. He's actually doing oh, really? it. Really? What, 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 what was he doing? He knows, he knows that we hate him, and he's actually Do you know, giving talk, it a bit back. Talking about him, quite seriously for a second, um, Ian Wright was on 6 of 6 on Sunday and said a very strange thing. I think he said it in BT Sports as well. You might have been on the, on, yeah, on the show. Yeah, yeah. That he was terrified. Yeah. For that, and I'm thinking, he's a professional footballer. You should be saying, great, show them they're wrong, show them everything you can do, blah, blah. Terrified that your son's going to do his job. Now, I'm being really what, he, what he said was on BT Sport was they said, you know, how do you feel about Sean getting... Because the team sheet came in and Sean was on it and they said, and he said, oh, I feel really really nervous for him, blah, blah, blah. Which you can sort of understand the father sort mm. of something. And and, and he's, I think he said, you know, I think you know, some of the QPR fans are uh, paraphrasing, sort of, you know, giving a bit of grief because he hasn't taken any of the loan spells he was offered and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's um, the reason. Yeah, <laughs> mm. um, but yeah, it's strange, though, isn't it? It's a strange thing for him to say. Yeah. Not really. He knows, but okay, is that, is he, that, he knows that, that his son has basically turned it in and taken early retirement, so he's nervous I've, because he's like, he's going to get found out. I've always felt very uncomfortable with Sean Wright Phillips being in the QPR squad and Ian Wright hating us so much, and and Sean Wright Phillips never being able to influence him because let's face it. If you, where, if you work somewhere, your dad would never slag off your workplace in public, would he? Even right. if he didn't like it, he would probably, to his mates, kind of keep the party line. But Ian Wright just goes for it. Even straight after the Palace game, on the side of the pitch at Palace, QPR are terrible, QPR are going down. What, he's obviously getting that from somewhere, isn't he? Well, he tore in as a wee bit in 6 or 6 but he was trying to be careful with his words. He was pausing a lot, which means he was thinking. <laughs> um, and yet... Yeah, no, it was even scarier that he's actually trying to be sensible. Well, I, I mean, obviously we know... Is that what it means when you pause? That's what I you, don't get, know. Ian Wright has to pause the thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you, missed, we, well, you read my joke there. I was going to pause... And, anyway, don't mind. But we know, we know what... <laughs> 
You were gonna. It's, it's, it's some joke with the punchline. Why the long pause? Some pause. Bear, yeah, I think, was, isn't it? Was, yeah. A bear walks into a bar. Yeah, yeah, that was. Why it. the long pause? Yeah. Yeah. You can tell that we're avoiding the obvious, aren't we? Hey, what? The, the this the bar. podcast is produced by Burble Media. Yeah, we are avoiding the obvious. Because you got Burble any bigger, by the way. Yeah. On that, on that headline. That's brilliant. That, that's almost like a, a tar block. So Gabe, who's our engineer, has handed me, who, who works, his company's Burble Media, and they're producing the podcast for us. Good name. Between now and the it's rest of the name. season. He's handed me a piece of paper, which basically tells you what I need to read out to give Burble their dues. And um, it's got a massive Burble logo on it. Shall I do it now? Yeah. Yeah. Go Pretend on, it's go, natural. Go. Let, sh- let me try my best to make it sound natural. And then you can tell me. So, listen, anyway, as you may have heard on previous shows, this podcast is being co-produced by our friends at Burble Media. So no, don't forget to no. check out what they're doing at burblemedia.com, at Burble Media on Twitter, and facebook.com slash Burble Media. Sorry, who is the company again? Can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, that was, that, that was good. And he's, he's, he's got an Apple Mac as well. I've never used an Apple Mac in my life. Am I, am I prehistoric or something? I, yes. I, I, don't have yeah. I don't have anything but Apple. Yeah. No wonder my fruit level's so bad. Anyway, David. <laughs> right, let me do the other things I need to do. You can um, follow us on... You can follow the podcast... You had to be my doctor to get that joke. You can follow the podcast on Twitter, at QPR Podcast. If you go into Facebook, I think you need to search for the new QPR Podcast. And our website with all our episodes is at QPRPod dot co dot uk um if you're listening to the new iteration of the podcast for the first time we have moved we used to be produced by playback media we're not anymore so you need to resubscribe on itunes you can get all the links you need at the website qprpod.co.uk right we have this evening we have david bardsley on the podcast in a few minutes time let we might have to do this in two parts because we're having to phone him at half past eight which will mean nothing to everybody listening tomorrow morning but we have to phone him in a few minutes so let's go to clive for thoughts on yesterday's defeat to everton that's clive what did you make of it that's effect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not good enough uh, as, as we suspected in previous weeks we're just not quite good enough for, for the Premier League, and it's 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 sad to watch. I mean, that we needed to win five to to sort of pose a, a total from our last nine. And if you can't beat Everton at home, the way they're playing, because I didn't think Everton were particularly good at all yesterday away in Europe on Thursday, and their record after European games this week, as we said last week, is appalling. You know that we can't win that game. I I just don't see that there's there's any hope left really, and. You know, it's different. Like I said, it's different reasons. It was a referee against Tottenham, and then you know we had a bad half an hour against Arsenal, and at Crystal Palace we completely collapsed. And we had a red card against um, Hull, so it's different reasons. And the, you know, you could say yesterday, did it really make sense to take Hoyler off just as for the first time in his life he seemed like he was playing with a bit of confidence? He'd had that shot off the bar that seemed a bit of an odd choice. Did it make sense to pump the ball long to Bobby Zamora when he's being marked by Phil Jagielka all day? I don't think Jagielka needed to change out of his club suit yesterday. And, you know, people have been saying that Everton's weakness this year is the lack of pace at the back, the centre-backs are old, and we just knocked it long. I mean, the amount of times that Jagielka just stood there and headed it back down the field, I just thought, you know, is is that the best we've got? But it is the best we've got, Mm -hmm. Um, and that's not good enough sadly and you, you don't actually see where the next win's coming from now I don't yeah think. i mean i don't think i'm not sure it is the best we got because vargas when he came on um looked very lively he obviously scored within mm. a few minutes of coming on um i mean i, I i'm with you i would have kept I, I mean again i saw on twitter whatever there was a few toilets you know let's call him toilets uh, detractors <laughs> you know don't do uh, that because a guy behind me does that all game yeah i know, I know. Calls toilet. Him toilet. yeah and, and it calls sandro sandra yeah, oh, it, it's just that's quite, oh. I think that's quite funny. Uh, Chris, why have I not thought for, of that? for ninety minutes? Oh no, sorry, Chris, carry on. Chris, did you think that Vargas was a bit weird when he came on? Because he came on and scored, and I thought this guy's going to tear this up for half an hour. And then he went and stood on the left wing, and he didn't get in the box. He yeah, hung back. He was jogging about. It was weird. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. I know what you Playing mean. Out of position again. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, the, yeah. I mean. The, the thing I'd like to have seen was him actually, you know, as I've said before, I mean, Ramsey, the one thing he has done is put people in the right positions, apart from when he puts Matt Phillips on the left instead of the right. But was, was Vargas actually being up front in his proper position, where he plays for Chile, who did very well in the World Cup, etc., etc.? Um, I think, I don't think Zamora had an awful game. I mean, the, the, the problem was that he, 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 he 
he had about three or four chances and just wasted the lot. And and that's the, that was the difference. Everton had a couple of chances, buried them. And it was, you know, it's the hope that kills you after all the, every single possible result ever went against us. Uh, went, sorry, went, went for, for, us, went for yeah. us on Saturday. And then even, you know, uh, through gritted teeth, you're sort of cheering on Chelsea almost against Hull. And, and, and then all of that and the fact all the, the reasons you've just mentioned, Everton coming back from the Ukraine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we still can't win. And uh, I don't know, uh, that was probably, in a, a sea of despair, that was probably the most frustrating performance of the whole season for me. I, th- I think the thing is, for me, it's that thing, isn't it? You, you, you used to be in the old days for the internet, for Twitter. You used to read the, 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 the Diddy Moores I, I read in them days or today newspaper that so-and-so hasn't scored for 18 games. They're about to sell him. He's the worst player they've ever had. Massive abuse for the sell and waste of money. And you know he's going to score a hat-trick against you. You just know that that is his day. <laughs> Rossini at Norwich did it regularly. Didn't score for ages. Came against us. Banged it in. It's the, Andy you know, Cole. Yeah, yes. and, and, and anyone, Andy Cole for Burnley. You know, I anyone could score that. against us. I mean, there was um, a few Wimbledon players did it as well. But Can you carry on with the up-to-date references of today newspaper and <laughs> Leroy Rossini, by the way? <laughs> Gabe, when was, were you born? What year were you born? Was, 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 92. I think today newspaper had finished it, printing it, it by Leroy 1992. Rosinia. It was... Guy play it's for a nice blue, <laughs> nice blue yeah. font. Anyway, yeah. so the whole thing's set, isn't it? The whole thing, everyone on Twitter has given it, this is our time, this, we're all doing the, this is our calling, this is what we've got to do. And within the first five minutes of looking at the most lacklustre Everton side I've ever seen at Loftus Road, ever, who were completely on their, blown out of their arse from kickoff, knackered, bewildered, didn't have a clue what they were doing, just basically turned up, there for the taking, and we played into their hands as Clive said the long ball bang We, but the thing is we didn't even pick up the headers it was going on all game long so no one actually thought you know what I'm going to go in here and pick the it was, and that's why we're going down there's, there's, people can argue for referees they can argue about this we're going down because we're simply not good enough and the goal that's the it. two Everton goals I think there's no pace in our team and both the Everton goals came from us losing the ball and I was sitting there in, in F block, and it, as the moves were progressing, I was in trouble. In trouble. You know the worst in thing trouble was, because there's no pace to get back. There's, the, I mean, there's that famous example in the Man United game where Cranshaw was walking back when he oh, should have yeah. been tracking back. But Sandro's not quick. Barton, who actually played well yesterday, isn't quick. There's no pace in the team. So when we lose the ball and we're in that transition between going forward and suddenly we've got to defend, there's no pace to get back. We were in trouble for both the Everton goals long before they went in. I was sitting there going, this is a goal. The embarrassing mm. thing about Coleman, though, he actually put his arm up about a minute before he got the ball. Mm. He ran down with his arm in the air. You would think someone in There's that nobody defense, quick enough. Well, even some of the... It's, oh, some, it's not about... Paul McGrath is one of the greatest players I've ever seen in my life, right? I'm not saying that because he, he played for the other Ireland. So before you say, you said it because you're Irish. But it's in his head. The game's in his head sometimes. And we're not even doing that. We're not even going to positions where we should... We're not reading the game. We're just getting caught well, out. The thing is, the fullbacks are being drawn, you know... That made sense to me, David, sorry. <laughs> The full, the full back, if the fullbacks get drawn in towards the, the, the centre backs, and then but the, the cover just is 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 non-existent. It doesn't, uh, you know. I mean, they, they, they had, seem to have so much space. Something we never seem to get much of. There are uh, so many problems in the team. Yeah, just, which we'll be exploring after our interview uh, with David Barsley, who hopefully is on the line from Florida now. Hi, David. It's Chris. How you doing, mate? How you doing, brother? I'm all right. I'm, I've not, not not been the best few weeks, to be honest. Being a QPR fan, I'm sure you're feeling the pain as well. Yeah, you know, it's been disappointing, I guess, you know, the last uh, few games. Um, you know, not that you can't um, take the effort away, but, you know, there has kind of been like, a, 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 you know, the Tottenham game, a, a specifically, you know, a big golf in, you know, technical abilities was, was plain to see. Young against young against even experience, so yeah, it's, it's a little bit difficult. At the weekend as as well, um, was tough to take that that defeat against Everton. Um, wasn't particularly a great game, but you know Everton seemed to get the job done, and you know we, it's just disappointing at this moment in time. You know, for for everybody, I guess. I mean, you know, I'm a fan like everybody else, and you know the most important thing is. You know, that word stability, and I, I really thought at the start of this year, you know, that was, we were going to find that. And obviously that's really not 
it's really not happened, I guess. No, I mean, we've just been saying before you came on, um, I don't, you know, I, play. it's not like the problems we've had in the past, and God knows over the years we've had lots of assorted problems, but it's not that players weren't trying, they're trying, but I, I mean, they just don't seem good enough to stay in the Premier League, I mean, in, in, that is the bottom line. Well, I mean, you know, I don't like to be critical of, of players ever, you know, because we've all been there and, you know, we've all had nightmares and bad situations and, you know, it's difficult to say. I mean, I, I just think, you know, when you get older, you look at things slightly different and, you know, you, you may, one may look at some of the players that came into the club at the start of the season and said, well, you know, they just got relegated out of the Premier League with their previous club and, you know, if they, if they kind of weren't good enough then, how could they be good enough now? And sometimes, you know, that's sometimes the way I look at it. I'm not saying that's the right way to look at it, but, you know, it is an argument. I mean, you know, Jordan Mutz has left already. Um, I think uh, big, big uh, Stephen Colco has had a, a difficult season. Um, you know, Rio's been out, in and out of the team. And, you know, we're talking about you know, a, a total legend uh, with Rio at the end of the day and a guy that is, you know, highly respected all over the world. But, you know, it, it's difficult sometimes when you drop down away from people that know you and they know your strengths to, you know, to, to be able to come good. I mean, I found that out at Blackpool, but, you know, it just, it, it, it has been dis dis disappointing, I guess. You know, I, I, I did expect a lot more. Um, but you, you, one would argue and say, you know, some of the some of the guys that came in, and I'm not being critical of them, you might just say, well, you know, they struggled the year before, so what's to say they're not going to struggle now? So it, it's it's difficult to always know which is, what what is the right thing to say, you know, when you, when you're a big fan and you're an ex-player, or it's it's very difficult because you no nobody ever wants to be critical, and and, and that's the hard part, really. David, we've had questions for you on Twitter. Steve Sace has asked, um, how hard is it to motivate a set of players in the circumstances that QPR find themselves in? You say that again, please, mate. I, I, I couldn't really hear you. Sometimes the signal keeps dropping away. Uh, that's all right. You're, you're on your way to training, aren't you, in Florida? Is that right? Yes, sir, yeah. We'll, 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 we'll try and keep the signal. Um, the question was, how hard is it to motivate the players in the circumstances that QPR find themselves in? Um, well, I mean, it, it, again, you know, uh, having you know possibly been in that situation before, you know, it, it is really difficult. Um, but the most important thing is, is to always realise that until it's impossible, um, you know, mathematically, then there's always hope. And I think that, you know, the team is still more than capable. You know, you, you look at look at the teams that have got to play right now, they've got a lot of tough games coming up, and that's the argumentative point. But it might it might go the other way in the sense that the players feel that they've got nothing to lose now and they can, you know, play with a little bit more freedom and you just you just don't know. They could pick up a couple of wins. But to find motivation it, it is difficult. And, you know, it, it appears to me to have been difficult all season in many ways. I mean, listen, when you play uh, at QPR, you know, I don't care whether it's Old Trafford, Liverpool, whatever, you know, when you're in that stadium and it's packed, there is no more motivation you need to play at QPR. You know, because the fans are right there with you, uh, right next to your ears, taking drawings, and you can hear everything that's going on, and the motivation factor is, is like, huge. And it takes you time, even though you might play 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 games. You know, every time you walk out there on that field, you've still got something to prove to the fans. And I think I think that's something that's been missing possibly uh, this year. Um, you know, I saw a few a few instances at the weekend. You know, possibly where the fans might be disappointed and they're getting in players' ears and the players are shouting. But, you know, at the end of the day, you just got to take it because if you're not playing well, you, you've got to respect the opinion and try to come out and do better, you know, two minutes later with your decision-making or whatever. But I, I just think um, it, it, I, I found it, you know, watching some of the games that sometimes there seems to be no motivation, even going back 
to the early parts of the season. And I don't know why that is. I can't argue that, but, you know, the, the, the public at QPR give, you know, nothing less than everything. And I, I, I sometimes I, you know, hate to say it because I was a player myself, you know, but sometimes I don't think the players might have given Trying to explain, it's run out a little bit. Might not be the right in but it's just some. That's what I, I, I feel. David, I, I hope you can you can still hear me. But is this uh, is this not just a QPR issue? Is this is this more an issue with the the sort of sport as a whole at the moment? Because if we go down, not many of these players will come with us. They'll all get another move, like you say. Some of them were relegated last year and got a move to QPR. Are they sort of almost in a way looking to the next move? That that motivation of we don't want to play in the championship isn't there because they know that they won't be coming. Well, I didn't hear that question too well. I guess uh, if we happen to drop out on the motivation to come back, I mean, was that pretty much what the question was? No, I'll, I'll, I'll try it again, David. The, what, I, what I was asking was, um, back in the day, may, maybe when you were playing, if you got relegated from the Premier League, you would be playing yourself in the first division. Nowadays, if a team yeah. gets relegated, all the players leave. Like you said, we've signed some players this year from relegated teams last year. Is there a, a sort of case that that motivation of I don't want to play in the Championship isn't there because they know that they won't. They'll all move on in the summer. Yeah, that, yeah I hear that now. Um, um, yeah, I, I think that, you know, in today's modern game, so many people have so many clauses in contracts, you've got to wonder why they actually play football at all, because, <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that, um, you know, listen, if, 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 you, if you join a club, you join it for a reason, you know, to, to go through the good times and the bad times. And, you know, this, these, these clauses that people have in contracts now, you can leave if we get relegated or blah, 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 blah. I mean, once again, it, this is why, you know, players kind of pop up and down. They get relegated with clubs. They come back up. And, and they, you know, they don't, they don't seem to have anything to prove to themselves because, you know, if you do get relegated with your club, you've got to give everything to try to get back again. I mean, you know, when we got relegated, I mean, unfortunately, I picked up an injury and it cost me you know, 15 months and I couldn't play a part in that, you know, because I was injured for so long. But I mean, you know, now if we go down, you know, I, I'm sure that players will look to move on because they feel that they are Premier League quality. And I'm not being critical of any players whatsoever, but everybody has a right to see it as they see it. I simply see it. If you get relegated, you weren't good enough in the first place. You know, individually, because everybody's made individual mistakes at that club this year. And, you know, Charlie's had a great season, um, as far as, you know, scoring goals and finishing goals. So, you, you know, you can't be critical of that because without his goals, we would be probably down already. Uh, you know, Rob Green's had a, a, a really great season, you know, but if you actually look at the, the, uh, the pattern of play for everybody else, it's been a bit of a struggle. And, um, you know, you, 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 you've got to wonder, well, you know, players, whatever happens, if they, I hope they don't, you know, and you've got to go mathematically right till the end, but you've got to be thinking, well, I've got to give everything to try to get back up next year. And uh, once again, that goes into, you know, people having to take pay drops and all that kind of thing. And some people think they're beyond that, maybe. Uh, and that's, but that's the modern game. And uh, there's just not a lot you can do about it. The only people that really suffer... I guess, are, are the fans. Um, um, sorry, David, just a, th one thing I was going to say to you as well was um, young Darnell Furlong um, came in a few weeks ago. As a fullback, um, how, did, how did you see that for someone so young who's, who's had an awful lot to cope with, who's, you know, I fear for, the way, for his confidence at times, being subbed at half-time and that there, but there's a good player in that kid waiting to come out. How should the club develop him from now on, do you think? Are you talking about um, the young players? No, I'm talking about um, Darnell Furlong. Um, came on and was subbed at half-time. And, and how, does, how do you think he will cope with that? Um, because he's obviously a, a talented kid. But to come in and get subbed and to be targeted by the Palace winger in the way that they did was a, a wee bit brutal. I mean, he's, he's going to need some real TLC, don't you think? I, I, you know what? I can't, I can't really hear the question. It's kind of, I've got like earphones. Let me, let me see if I can hear you better without... 
I'll just yeah. pause for a second. I've got a question off Twitter about. Oh, we'll ask the question again. Was it about furlough? It's has he ever? Uh, but, 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 what, would he give youth players a chance at this time of the season in a relegation yeah. battle? Why don't you just ask it, QPR Sharpie? No, that's fine. You go with it. You, well, go on, just go, ask go it. Go with the first, first, and then that leads on from that. Are you still there, David? And then you can I think he's got the last question. Are we switching over? Yeah. I've got. A, are you still there, Dave? I don't know if it is. Yeah, I'm still here, mate. Okay, man, can you hear me okay now? Yes, it is. Yes. Good man. Paul, Paul's question, uh, and I was going to ask a similar one. Uh, Paul Finney's question was about Darnell Furlong. Um, and basically, uh, he he was putting against Crystal Palace. He's been putting a couple of times, and he was he, he was given a torrid time. How how do you think um, how do you think the club should deal with him from now on? Well, I mean, you, you know, um, you know, you know, my opinions on the youth, the youth thing. It's uh, you know, for teams like QPR, it's like an absolute vital thing to have, whatever way you look at it. And um, you know, the the fact that you know Chris used a little bit of youth, you know, in the past two or three weeks is a good thing. But the, the problem is, is that you know, it's. You know, in, in, in the olden days when we were playing, it was like, you know, Trevor Sinclair, Andrew Impey are coming into a team that are they're playing well, they're winning games. Yeah, we might play bad now and again, but, you know, the young players came into the team and it was like, it didn't really matter what was going on, but because they were going to perform, uh, you know, good or bad. Now it's they're coming into a situation. I think Darnell had a really good game when he first played in his very first game. And then obviously at Palace... It's a totally different game because the first game that he played, they, did, they didn't have out and out wide players, uh, the opposition. And obviously, when he went, when he went to Crystal Palace, you know, you're talking about whatever pe- people feel about the uh, the wide players at Palace. Both of them have got incredible ability and speed. And, and you know, you've got to ask questions maybe and say, well, should he have played or shouldn't he played? I mean, I don't know whether Isla was injured. Um, I'm not sure. But, but, you know, sometimes, like like in that game, one would argue that that's something that Darnell just doesn't want to have as a young player growing up because, you know, he got, he got uh, you know, it, it was very difficult to win the game and they obviously got two goals from that side. And, you know, if, if you're actually looking at it just from a, a technical aspect, well, that's where both came from and the, the crosses weren't stopped. But, you know, the, the question is, was should he have been in that game? Maybe come back the game after. You know, it's like horses for courses at the end of the day. You just got to look at the opposition and say, well, is he the right, the right person to play? I mean, based upon the, the results of QPR again, maybe somebody with experience should play there and take, and take the brunt of the, the, uh, the, the, the situation. And maybe I'll look at it in slightly a different way, but, you know, if you can't be experienced and if you're going to get beat, then the experienced players, the experienced players, should be the ones that have to take it on their shoulders. Yeah, no, I, 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 no, I, I, t- I totally get what you say there, mate. Um, um, I, I'm going to finish on a lighter note, really, because it's it's all been a bit doom and gloom tonight. But I just want to say, I mean, you're a pretty mean striker of the ball yourself. Um, I mean, how did you rate Matty Phillips' goal against Palace? Well, I mean, you know, it's uh, nobody can argue the fact that it was uh, an absolutely, you know. Uh, fantastic strike of the ball. I mean, he's a good striker of the ball anyway. I mean, the, the, the fact that it just set up nicely for him and it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's one of those goals of a lifetime and you, and, and it, it was a great lift for everybody. But yeah, I mean, it was um, a great strike and you've got to put it down as one of the goals of the season. I mean, you know, uh, Pirlo scored a magnificent goal the weekend before for his club and, you know, I think uh, Matty Phillips' goals was uh, equal to that, if not better, um, based upon where, where the distant, you know, the keeper. <laughs> Might as well have been catching, you know, a multiple balls or something in space, but it was a great <laughs> strike. Yeah, I mean, it was... You um... know, it's like... I was going to say, I mean, you, obviously, I mean, I think you were out injured when Trevor Sinclair scored that goal against Barnsley. I don't know if you were watching from the stands or not. 
Um, and, and, and I just wondered, were, were, were you in the side when Roy Wegley scored that wonder goal against Leeds? I know you were in the, in the, in the squad at that time. Yeah, I played. Yeah, I thought you did, yeah. So, I mean, I was just going to say, out of, of, of you, Sinclair, Wegley and Matty Phillips, which one of those three would you get your vote? Well, I think you know. I, I think I would. I would still have to give that to Roy um, because yeah. you know there's, there's more to it than you know. Matty's Matty's is a great strike. Trevor, they're individual strikes. Yeah. And uh, you know, you, you know, it's like Arsenal have scored some unbelievable goals this year with movement. And you know that that goal that Roy scored, there was a lot of movement before, a lot of great passing that led to that little run that he went on. And the inevitable shot. Um, so, you know, I would still give that to Roy because, you know, um, there were so many people involved and Roy just happened to use his qualities to finish it off with his, you know, his fantastic, you know, his own ability, really. So, yeah, I would think Roy still still go with Roy on that one. Absolutely. Nice one, mate. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, I think that's uh, it, David. We're, I mean, hope training goes fine. Um, and thanks very much for taking the time to talk to us. No, it's it's always great to come on. Uh, you know, uh, you know, we got a big event next week. We travel away, and you know, we're looking. You know, we're not we're not sure how how much longer the the, the, the program is going to continue here now. You know, we've had you know a lot of great success, and you know, twelve players gone pro already, and it's it, it's got it's gone really really well. And you know, we've got Everton coming over uh, the U18 Premier League champions next week. I'm glad we've not been drawn against them, but, <laughs> you know, we've, been out, we've got a great event coming up, playing teams in Germany and stuff like that, but time to get back into the real world, mate, and get a proper job. <laughs> well, listen, mate, it's been brilliant to talk to you as ever, um, and um, I'm sure we'll be talking to you again next season, and hopefully we'll be a bit, a bit more cheery then. Sounds and in the good. Premier League. I appreciate the time. Yeah, yeah, no problem, mate. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. That's a fact. Take care, guys. Take care. Thank you, David. Much appreciated. Bye bye. Cheers. Bye bye. We may well have cut that out. I know, but by it's the terrible. time people listen to it, I don't think it. people people should go to Coors to learn Northern Irish, but, including, so, including myself. B- before we get to that, we we don't know what Gabe is going to cut out or not cut out. So <laughs> I think we if, cut if out he's done a perfect even. edit, Finney must have asked the same question about three or four times, <laughs> yeah. and the. And the, and Barsley could not understand. And, him. To be, and to be fair to him, he was because we've had a couple of problems with this transmission. You know, being the fact that he's in America and he is driving, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, um, he, he did say, "Oh, I think the uh, I think the microphone's kind of bit. I'll try taking my earphones out. That'll make it a bit better." <laughs> and then I asked the same. And then no, I still didn't quite get it. I asked the same question once. Oh right, yeah, Daniel Fern. <laughs> So basically, uh, I should I, I should I should take up writing. Oh come no! Come with subtitles. For me, <laughs> yeah, I think. yeah. No, interesting in what he said. There's some good points he raised, superbly, um, and about. But interesting what he said about motivation. Away. Yeah, absolutely. If you if you follow him on QPR, and if if anybody doesn't, I would encourage him to do so. Academy QPR USA is his Twitter handle. He's great. He loves QPR. And I love that. Given yeah, that he's absolutely. He's played for loads yeah. of clubs. He's played and for he's Blackpool. He's from Manchester and as well, isn't he? Watford, so? and he's from Manchester. Yeah. But we say this time and time again, but those players from that kind, that era really loved the club better than the layabouts we've got at the moment. Yeah. Will this generation of players from 2011 love yeah. the club? Well, I think, well, no, I think yeah, there's yeah. an Argentinian midfield, injury prone midfielder who will. Yes. Before then. Actually. Yeah, but it's the same sort of era, isn't it? Stop trying to be clever. No, but what I'm saying is, that we're going to that's talk how about... I make a living. I know. <laughs> really? Yeah. You're skinned. Um, the, the thing is, today, we, we all read what Joey said, didn't we, on the um, on Twitter. What do we think about that? Where was he for the last three games? Sorry, I haven't followed his Twitter religiously today. Okay. For he, me and anyone else that hasn't, what did he say? He, he came on and he, he, he more or less blamed... Our signing policy, recruitment policy, to, to put it mildly, is wrong, and basically putting the finger above the players. We've signed 111 players since 2011. It's, it's, we, we paid three million pounds for a goalkeeper who's sitting on the bench, who's not even on the bench half the time. So I'm not sure if recruitment's the right thing. I think he, I think he, he basically said, um, 
I mean, the papers picked it up and said it was a thinly veiled attack on Harry Redknapp, which Joey has since come out no. and said he's been misquoted and that wasn't. Said the it case. was a thickly veiled <laughs> yeah. attack. Yeah, but it seemed like that because I mean, essentially, what he was saying was what you need at the start of the season is a good pre-season and good recruitment. And, and by inference, he was saying that we, we had we, we had a crap pre-season. No, and Chris actually said that last season we were lucky to go up. Right. The team was really... We, 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 we went through the playoffs. Massive luck. Didn't really deserve it. That's how it came across. Yeah, that's well, well that, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Spending, spending 70 million quid. In the process. Well, let, let's... Well, let's... maybe he was saying... We, 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 was he not saying we got the recruitment wrong? Because, um, I mean, having said that, the summer recruitments, I mean, uh, I think the general consensus was it wasn't that bad. No, really. I, don't think, it, I don't think it was that bad. And I placed little stock in what Joey Barton has <laughs> said today but for, for two reasons. One, where has he been for the last three games yeah. when we needed him? Yeah. He's been sitting in the stand because he was an idiot. And two... He slagged off Warnock after he left and said Hughes was the bee's knees. Yeah. He slagged off Hughes after he left. Yeah. And, and now he slagged off Redknapp after. It's just what he does. No. It's you never what he said about Newcastle. Never, yeah, and he slagged Newcastle off after he left there. We found out. Never, yeah. ever, ever Joey's fault. But is that not the problem with QPR, though? As, a, as, an, as actually, forget Joey, forget everything. No one is putting their hands up and saying, Do you know what, we've massively screwed up. It's the board on taking responsibility. I mean, the players, it would seem... It'd be wrong. I mean, it's not the same players we went down with the last time. They, they, they do. Care. I do believe they care. Yeah, I do. It, it, it's just gone mm. completely wrong, and the organisation's wrong. Well, and everything else. Well, going back to that point we had just before. Sorry to talk about him. Was um, you know, you talk about David Bardsley, Trevor Sinclair, another one springs to mind. Andy Sinton, all these Andy Impey, all these players who aren't Q- yeah, who aren't QPR fans by birth. It, you, you know what I mean? They're, they're they support other clubs, but they've played for QPR and they've got Gary massive Bannister. affection. They call us we, blah, 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 blah. Something Redknapp never did in his uh, two and a half year tenure. Um, but how many of the current squad would actually... It was uh, difficult for him. Rob Green, maybe? I mean, if this podcast, on tw- in 20 years' time, we have this podcast, we say, so Rob, you know, you remember your days at QPR? Well, Rob Green's brother-in-law is a QPR season ticket holder. Is he? I didn't know that. But well, I mean, what I'm saying is, how many of the... the, the co- you, you said, you said yeah. four the, the only one that, who that, I think who the club's got under their skin... In that way, is Ali falling? Clint right. Hill. I, I, I think Clint Hill gives everything every time he plays for QPR, but he has seen a lot of goals. Clint Hill. Oh, yeah. I'm not supposed to say that, am I? Because the iTunes rating. <laughs> He's rules. seen a lot of nonsense. Yeah. Yes, Clint indeed. Hill. No, but I think um, he gets, no, Clint Hill gets it. He gets it. I he mean, gets it. But who tell. would talk about the club the same way David Bardsley does? Don't know all the players. Haven't met or spoken to okay. a lot of them. Is this different to any other club at the moment? Is this, is, a, is this Yeah, a, no, I, I, I don't agree say, with that. I, I think you'd that. say that I think most players are just moving yeah. around for money. Yeah. Some of them move even when they don't Good want point. to, just for a signing on fee and another agent fee and another move. I don't, you know, how many Arsenal players maybe, you know, in, in 20 years' time will talk about Arsenal the same way Tony Adams talks about Arsenal? No, probably, but you, you look at many. Thierry, in that example, you look at Thierry Henry, mm. who's re- only retired a few weeks ago. And how he feels for Arsenal, mm, you would go, love for a player. To so there's, you know, there's like there's that. one fair enough. But I think most of the clubs that are sort of middle of the road plodding along clubs are just absolutely stacked with players earning loads of money with no affinity for the club and, and plodding along. Well, you know, well, let's let's take a look at these statistics that we're doing the rounds. I saw them through Marek Lipinski on on Twitter, and I printed out a few of them. Apparently, since 2011, so since we went up, we have had I think it's 120 games. 101 players. Yeah. Including eight goalies. And, and Can you name wins? the eight goalies? How many wins? Oh, that I don't know. Uh, I think it's 20. Was it 20? 20 wins. But how many, how many of those players, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's very acute at QPR. How many players were youth teamers, I would suspect? Very, very but then few. You, but then you can see as well how, how, how you have each day. Every time you get a player, whether it be at loan, whether he comes in, there's a big wedge going towards an agent, there's a big appearance mm. fee, there's a big sign non fee. That that tells you why we're two hundred million quid in debt, mm, and we but, haven't got one and, sink. We haven't got a training ground, and, a structure, or anything. And out of those one hundred and one players, eight goalies, which maybe we'll ask Twitter to name them tomorrow because yeah. I, I couldn't name all eight of them. Um, it's, only sixteen, eight goalies. Yeah, only sixteen players have scored more than three goals. Clive would know the goalkeepers. I'm telling you Since that. when? Since, Since we came up, 2011. So who are the eight goalies? Go on. It's going to be Ken- go- well, Kenny, McCarthy, and Green are the, the three obvious ones. Yeah. yeah. 
And then you can leave the rest with me. Eight. Uh, including Brazilian, last, including Brazilian, well, Cesar. Julio Cesar, including last season. Yeah. The last, since we came up in 2011. Right, let's, let's, let's move on. Okay, we've we'll got four. It says eight. It said eight on those stats. Uh, players with three plus goals since 2011 promotion. Obviously, Charlie Austin is by far and away the one who scored the most with 35. Second most goals. Um, Second most goals in goals. Helgerson Bobby Zamora And then Mackey Bobby Zamora with 11 Then Mackey with 10 um, um, So Mackey scored 10 goals in the Prem No 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 oh, sorry, Just 10 goals Well yeah It would have been Wouldn't it uh, Yeah it would have been So yeah People were slagging him last week And said he wasn't very good And he's this and that and the other the Mackey, oh, I yeah. missed that man I saw that game oh, the, yeah. Yeah. the Mackey thing is just <sighs> This is the time of the season Where we bring back Mackey, Hill, and Derry's free now. Sean Derry got sacked today, so I he saw, can come I saw, back into the midfield for us, can't he? I saw the, some of the replies to your tweet last week about do you miss Jamie Mackey, and I just it just gets me on the verge of giving up because no, he's you know he's not the most technically gifted, but never said he was messy, effective, and tries hard, and that's a damn sight more than most of the players we've got now who either don't try hard and aren't effective or do try hard and aren't effective, but very rarely both. But he got hammered. I mean, some people actually hammered him. I was mm, quite surprised. Some people on our message board really don't. I've got a real thing against him. And, you know, tell me what amazing player we've replaced him with since. Even now, what, what, great, play, what great player plays Jamie Mackey's position now, who's better, who scores more, cares more than Jamie Mackey did for us? We haven't oh, got I one. can't see how you can hammer a player... Who 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 who, wrong, who leaves his heart out on the pitch? You know, I mean, surely as football fans, that's what you want to see. Even if you know, you go back to Devon White and the likes of that. You know, I know he's a bit of a figure of fun, but he 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 was out there and he was giving it his all. Yeah. You know? you, and that's, yeah. as, as fans on the pitch, you you, you want to see what you would be doing yourself if you're in a QPR shirt, albeit very badly. If it was me, you know what? You've, You've just be... hit the deal on the head, though. Sorry, Chris. Of like years ago, what being a QPR special was picking up people like June Mackey, people a bit like. Dennis Beardies and, and, and all these sort of players, Gary Bannisters, whatever. And actually, they, they weren't playing for big premiership clubs or big first division clubs back in the day. But they, they gave that wee bit extra. And you could live the dream through them. Jimmy Mackey cost peanuts, absolute peanuts. Yeah, we spent six or seven million pounds on other players who have been absolute. But not this very good. this comes back to the this comes back You've to the other not very good I choose. This comes back <laughs> yeah. to the the point that that we were making last week in that the fans you know as as a bunch we all say we want to plan long term we want to pick youth teamers we don't want to buy anymore. So Chris Ramsey picks Darnell Furlong and everyone goes well I wouldn't have picked him in that game. Well, you know what game are you going to pick him in? We play you know. Yeah. I have a mischievous question to ask you. Do you think it's now two weeks till our next game? I know what you're going to say. Do you think Chris Ramsey will uh, be our manager? Yes. Yeah. Oh, sure. yeah, yeah, no. Sure? Yeah. Well, no, sure, the, sure the long-term plan won't turn into Definitely, a very, yeah, very short-term no, no, one? Yeah, he's, he's there for the long-term. I thought the mischievous question you were going to ask was... Do you really believe that? Yeah, I do, actually, yeah. Because I think there's Ferdinand's got serious control at QPR, and I think as long as... Well, that's a good thing or a bad thing, Tam will tell. I right? certainly don't think he'll be the manager next season, but I don't think we're going to replace him. I think he'll, he'll stay at the club, but... Well, yeah. my, well, the thing is, my fear is that you've got someone like Rams, who's obviously good because he's got a youth team players and everything else. But me and a manager, if you replace him, how is he going to stay in there? Mm. But, but do you that, not think this whole one, long-term... Is, uh, the reason why I ask it is, will this long-term thing turn very short-term? I think eight games, we've got to win half of them. We have no momentum. Let's just get someone, anyone in to try and turn it around for eight I, games. I, I think it's a I very think QPR thing to do. It is, but I, no for the reason that Paul said. Yeah, you're probably yeah. right. Well, I, what I, did I, you think I was well, going to ask? I thought you were going to say, uh, and I'll put this to you as my mischievous question, would we still be in the relegation zone now if Harry Redknapp was still here? Yes. I don't remember us winning a whole load of games and playing brilliantly when Saggy Chops was here. Would we still be in the relegation zone if Tim Sherwood was here? Probably not, but I, I, I think I'd be even more unhappy just seeing him every week. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Sherwood would be, would be a hand grenade into a, mm. another... Tim Sherwood would have been like all our other managers, wouldn't he? We would, just been, we would have been getting ready to sack him about November, December next year when we're bottom of the league again. Yeah. It would have just gone round and round in a circle. He would have signed some players and given it a bit of mouth. David, and... you didn't answer the question. Harry Redknapp, would we have been in the relegation zone still? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I think we, I th I, I I think we would have been... I believe he wouldn't have reversed yeah. it. I don't, think, I don't think Harry could inspire the players at half the time. I think it was could his last him. job. By the way, he hasn't had a knee operation. No, we know that. Yeah. Physiotherapy. He had one him. job, to, one job too many, and it was the last job he it's didn't like care about. It's like Ocean's Thirteen, isn't it? 
Much like um, Warnock, much like Warnock went to Leeds when he should never have done so yeah. because he was so bitter about how it ended at QPR, yeah. he just lashed out and took a job. I think Harry was so stung by not getting the England job when all his chums in the press said he was a shoe in for it that he he took another job oh, when he never should have done. Turning oh, down the Ukraine job in the process, right? Wow. What a man! Hindsight, right? Uh, Oz end. Yeah, I got the program. That, oh, sorry. Go no, on. Paul, go on. Yeah, go on, Paul. I, I got the program this week. Um, I didn't pay for it. Someone gave it to me because I haven't brought a program in about fifteen years. No offence to those Ooh, of me. Oh, you but... renegade, you. I'll, I'll learn them. You live life on the edge, don't you? Uh, I, you I, haven't I, bought a programme in 15 years. You know, QPR uh, sitting woo! up, taking notice, changing their ways. No, the, reason, the reason being... That is a it, game reason, changer. Actually, yeah, I tell a lie. The last programme I got was years ago, the 1967... Pro- re- Bloody re- hell. Re- 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 How old were you then? About five? No, they did a reproduction. The retro. <laughs> the retro programme from 67. When was that? I think it was when we played... I think we were at Southampton. I'm not sure, but we, I brought that one. Anyway... I haven't bought a programme for... Anyway, would, anyway... Like six it's, years. It's an award-winning programme as well, so I went through it, as you do. Unlike ours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, used to, I used to buy Kick Up The R's, just play in the loft. I used to buy even even the... the, the um, all Quiet on the Western Avenue? Yeah, All Quiet on the Western Avenue. And, and then... Pink Doherty? I think it's my groin. See, they used to see the Libertines for Massive anyway, too. Anyway, the, yeah. what, I read, Which tangent are we on here? So, <laughs> right. so the programme was a Jim Gregory 50th anniversary no, special, that. right? Yeah, which, no, which is very good, actually. Sorry, I shouldn't say forget, forget that. Uh, sorry. <laughs> forget that. <laughs> Forget that. Go um, on. <laughs> no, um, the, 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 yeah. I didn't mean it like... Spit it out, man. Of course. <laughs> that's a massive part of the programme. Wonderful. I was going to come to Clive's, but you're trying to throw me off sense of cool here, whatever. Clive, how well, do I think this is a rehearsed joke, by the way. It's not. It's Go not. on. Clive, how dare you go into a programme and ask a Premier League club to reduce ticket prices for away fans, to even say that away fans are always charged the highest price, given the worst views, and are probably... The only ones that go week in, week out, the most loyal fans, blah, blah, everything else that you said, which is fine, and they get treated dis- horrible by other clubs, don't bring that up, because that's a, that's a myth. Apparently it doesn't happen. We're not... That, that's and also, he, he was on about the big windfall of TV Are you money. really having a go at Clive, or is this a... You're it's, siding with Clive, I can't work it This out. is him being my friend, this is what it sounds right. like. Right. <laughs> right, okay. And Clive is brilliant. I can't believe QPR published it, to be fair. <laughs> Because <laughs> I think that about a lot of the stuff yeah. I write. Yeah. And I read it and I thought, this is quite, this is brilliant because it's actually so true because, of course, away fans have been treated appallingly by all clubs. And we treat away fans appallingly at our club as well, if we're going to be honest about it. And the money that's been brought into the game, the money us fans pay, how we get treated by stewards, how we get treated by clubs who go away from home. Well done, Clive. An absolutely brilliant article and an insight into an actual real fan writing in the programme. Oh, thank you, Paul. You're yeah, all right. Not that I'm saying anyone else that doesn't write in the programme is not a real fan, but I thought... This is horrible. A... I think this is... This is sick. Clive, thing... <laughs> Clive feels awkward, yeah, yeah. so let's go to Chris's R's Okay, end. okay. That well, wasn't my R's end. That was what? my bit about the programme. Yeah, oh, please. <laughs> well, no, that your is your R's end. Yeah. Your oh, okay. Oh, I had something else to say, but I wouldn't say it now. Who? You've ruined it. No, that's okay. You've ruined it. Actually, no. I just want to... A little quick story. My my mate Stephen was in Dungannon Airport. Yes, uh, Belfast. I knew Airport. this was going to yes. be about I, some kind of Irish QPR uh, fan. Go on. During the war. <laughs> go on. Go on. Go during, on. During the war. Let's it's hear really it. bad to link. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. Oh, we, we've uh, given him so much editing to do tonight. Yes. Anyway, no, um, poor sod got to the airport yesterday. Flight delayed for half an hour. Flight delayed for three hours. Poor sod. Yeah. Basically, the whole airline completely. Go on. So Stephen's phoning me. He's giving it like I won't do his, his accent. Cause I'm terrible at accents. And he's basically said, "I don't care." Irish he goes, he goes I look at the plane. I don't care if there's a fault on the plane. I really don't give a no. Sh- sh- ah, the, I don't <laughs> care about anything. I just want him to fix it and take the chances. If it falls in, if it goes wrong, it goes wrong. I don't care. I just want to get to the game. Stephen, you didn't miss much. Carry on. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, mine isn't about Stephen or planes, or but it has. No, got, before I played him, it has got something fine. to do with the program, though. It's just um, I won't disclose exactly where, but it's somewhere in the vicinity of where I sit, there's a um, one of the new breed of QPR fans who brings. Their, we are in the family stand, brings their kids along, blah blah blah, and uh, he's a bit of a know it all, and he's forever. He's got a, a very loud voice. Forever say yes, and that's uh, that's Charlie Austin, and he's a strike. And, and then and the, the kids, who's he talking to at this point? Uh, he's talking to his kids, and right. um, and yeah, it, it's it, it's been going on for a while now. My, my uh, you know, my uh, my little girl. Oh God, he's here again. Uh, but anyway, he was looking through the program. They said, uh, Dad, Daddy, uh, Jim Gregory, what's he to do with QPR? And he said. 
Well, yes, he was one of the best managers we've had in a while uh, back in the old days. And there was a few people Ooh. just turned around and looked at him and just thought, oh, for goodness sake. So all I, uh, that, that, that was my R's end. If you're going to have a loud mouth and pretend you know any, everything about QPR, then research your history before you tell your kids. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. He Ooh, may have thought sharp. he meant he may have confused him mentally with Jim Smith. No, no. Who also Gregory. wasn't one of the greatest managers. No, he wasn't. Oh, Even I'll worse, do, John Gregory. <laughs> I'll do Sorry. my R's end, which is sort of nothing to do with QPR, but kind of is. I I randomly found a, a, a film I'd never heard of on Sky Movies the other day. If anyone's got Sky Movies, there's a great great football film that's been released this week called Next Goal Wins, and it is a documentary. Oh, yes. Of, do you remember the American Samoan football team? They yes. lost 32 nil, 31 nil Ooh. to Australia. Yeah. They lost 31 nil to Australia in 2001. And this basically was a behind the scenes following the worst team in world football who'd not won a game in 17 years and kind of following them on their World Cup qualification. And it, if you've got Sky, call it up and watch it or, or kind of look at it on the internet or whatever. It is the most fantastic football film. We talk about QPR and their overpaid prima donnas and Premier League football. This is pure people who just love football, don't get paid for it, and their journey into World Cup qualification, and it will make you fall in love with football again. So if anybody's got an hour and a half spare, watch that film. And uh, that's through David Fraser Promotions, isn't no, it? No, I just loved it. I just <laughs> love the film. And yeah. Next Goal Wins, it's called. Excellent. Clive? Well, it fell in love with football just for for a little five minutes again on Sunday with Ali falling out on the, the pitch at half time. Lovely to see him and I hope he plays for us next year and I hope his knee doesn't fall apart. Although every time I watch these videos of him back in training at Harlington, I'm just sort of wincing and going, don't do that. Just careful, stand still. So I don't know whether he has got a chance of coming back for a, a third time. I really hope he has because he spoke very passionately at half time yesterday and it was the best bit of the day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Best bit next to your program bit. Well, the, what you say about the program, credit to uh, to QPR and to Weber who edits it. For it, they never actually do change what I write. No, I, no, have to, I do have to be a bit sensible with it, but they've never like come back to me and said you can't say that. So, fair play to them. Just one last thing before we end. It was the fiftieth was brilliant on, on on Jim Gregory. There's no two ways about it. And what, well, he's one of the best managers we've ever had. Yes. <laughs> and what a debt we owe that man. And. He picked the club up, ran it properly, did everything right, did everything the right way. Are you suggesting somebody needs to take note? I think someone did in the program said they did research on Jim Gregory. I think they should research him a little bit more closely and mm. follow it very, very more closely. Basically, Paul wants the ghost of Jim Gregory to come back and uh, pick the club up and haul it back into the good times. Yeah, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't do any worse. Just possess a boardroom. Excellent. Right, um, I can confidently predict that we will not lose on Saturday. Um, we don't I know if we're going to be... I knew you were going to say that. I <laughs> knew in my head, because I bet he mentions we're not going to win this weekend. I, <laughs> obviously. Yes. Um, I don't yeah. know if we're going to be back next week or not. We haven't got a game. We will keep in touch on Twitter. Perhaps we might do something special next week. We might do something special. Keep in touch on Twitter, which is at QPR Podcast. Yeah, we might do it naked next week, just for the crack. <laughs> Please, can we not? <laughs> to, to, just for the crack. Oh, no. we spoke over that joke. Sorry, I didn't um, mean it. Just to remind you all to hear our episodes at qprpod.co.uk, and I definitely haven't been passed this piece of paper to read out that the show wouldn't have been made possible without Burble Media. Give them a follow at Burble Media. Burble Media. I'm going to get naked just for the crack. Right. Thank you very much for listening. This has been the QPR podcast. We will see you next time. QPR. QPR. The QPR podcast is a West 12 Media and Burble Media production.